Hi friends, let me show you what it's doing this morning in Ahihik, Mexico. It's raining. Well, we don't call this rain, we just call this sprinkling. Actually, I don't even know if you can see it. It's, uh, you're safe and you know it. Yep, because we're in Mexico. It's 70 degrees, perfect. I'm going to go in here, sit down at my desk and answer some questions. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. We got our first really big thunderstorm and rain last night. Seems like it's about a month early. This is uh, middle of May and uh, usually it doesn't start till the middle of June. So don't know that the rainy season has started, but the rains last night were very welcome. Uh, electricity went off for about an hour and uh, shut down our Netflix show we were watching. So we went to bed a little earlier. Bienvenidos de Mexico. <laughs> Last week, I said that my next video, which is this video, would be a question and answer. So leave me some questions and boy, did you. Thanks a lot. Uh, if I don't get to your question today, maybe I'll throw a few more in in the next video also. I wanted to start with this one. It says, Jerry, as always, wonderful video. Please do not get like some other channels. On another channel, I think they've done at least 10 videos in the last year on the price of living at Lake Chapala. I refuse to even watch them and I unsubscribe. Uh, this is from Ray Michaelski. Ray, I hope you don't unsubscribe, but I am going to throw in here something that I bought recently and I do talk about the price of it. Um, then I'm gonna to get to the questions and the answers, but uh, Ray, Please don't go away. I got a heavy package delivered today here at my home in Ajijic, Mexico. Delivered by DHL. Came from Amazon.com Mexico. And uh, it's not a product review that I'm going to do here. It's just something that I needed to buy. A few years ago, when we were gone in up into the United States, my well pump stopped working and they replaced it with a smaller pump than I had before. They replaced it with a half horsepower pump. And before that I had had a one horsepower pump. Well, it's never had the pressure and the force that I was used to, or that the gardener was used to. We use it to water the lawn sometimes. And I ordered a new pump. That's it, right there, and it's heavy. This is a one horsepower jet pump made for a well. And I ordered it from uh, Mexico Amazon. And I thought you might be interested today in what I paid for this compared to what I would have, would have had to pay in the United States. This is the screenshot from Amazon.com Mexico. It was a little over 4,000 pesos with tax, and that came to 232 U.S. dollars. Here's the U.S. price of a comparable pump from Home Depot in the United States of America. <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing at me. Quite often before I do these videos, I comb my hair. Today I'm being a plumber. Hey, Google. What's the weather? Google's not talking to me. Hey, Google, 
What's the weather today? Today in Ajijic, it'll be cloudy with a forecasted high of 79 and a low of 60. Right now it's 71 degrees and cloudy. Ajijic. Google thinks I live in Ajijic. Those of us who live here say Ahihik. Anyway, speaking of that uh, pump I bought for my well, I need some PVC fittings. So uh, I went to the hardware store and got a list of them. And just for my own curiosity, I decided to check out how much it would have cost me if I got them in the United States instead of here in Mexico. So I have the receipt right here. Let's talk about it. Here's my receipt and it's in Spanish. Um, a union, you know what a union is. Tapón is a cap. Codo is an elbow. Adapter Embra is a PVC pipe to female threads. A reduction, you know what that is, a reducer. Copla is a coupling and PVC cemento. So that's pesos printed and US dollars that I looked up at online at Home Depot. Bottom line, $30.35 at uh, Home Depot in the United States. 209 pesos here. $12 US dollars hit my credit card. $12 in Mexico versus $30 in the USA for the same things exactly. Well, let's wet the whistle before we get into the questions and answers. This first one is about wetting your whistle. See how I did that? It's like a segue transition. A question for your next video. I'm an 82 year old geezer who is on some meds that make drinking alcohol ill advised. I still like the conviviality of bars and the taste of beer. From your experience, do most bars stock one of the many non-alcoholic beers? Well, uh, I brought this out of my refrigerator just now. I drink Corona Cero, non-alcoholic beer. And of course, I buy that up here at my local grocery store and keep it in the refrigerator. With regard to your question about is it stocked in the local cantinas and bars, I have not been in a bar for over 30 years. Sorry, can't answer your question. Quick question that refers back to one of your clips about no fee debit cards in Mexico. You had mentioned Capital One debit card and Charles Schwab debit card. Um, what do you recommend these days? Actually, uh, the way that I do those things has changed a little bit. Um, I don't use my debit card as much as I used to. Used to be when I went out and uh, uh, like if I went to the grocery store or Walmart or something and I bought groceries, I would use my debit card. I figured out that I get exactly the same exchange rate, which is the current rate at that moment, with my Capital One credit card. And um, I get 2% back on my Capital One credit card. So I use that all the time. And uh, two, three years ago, if you went to the hardware store, they would take 3% extra for using a credit card. Well, that's no longer the case. Um, restaurants, uh, the hardware store, uh, grocery stores, mom and pop markets, uh, the dentist, the doctor, they take credit cards now and they don't charge that extra 3% that they were doing. So they've caught up with the rest of the world in terms of using credit cards. It's the norm instead of paying cash. Uh, three, four years ago, and certainly 20 years ago when we came here, it was cash only then. And now it, uh, credit cards are widely accepted. Even the little tiny mom and pop stores, they have that little machine where you stick your card in. So it works. Um, the reason that I still use the debit card instead of the credit card is that I still need cash. And you certainly you don't want to get a cash advance on a credit card. So when I go to the ATM that I use, which is the one at Centro Magno there by the theaters, 
Um, I have also discovered the um, uh, exchange, or the um, uh, ATM fee is 58 pesos. I recently discovered that I could get 20,000 pesos at a time instead of 10,000 pesos at a time, which means that I'm paying 58 pesos for the ATM fee for tw twice as much money. I haven't tried 30,000 because I didn't need that much money, but I'm going to try that also. I, I don't know if that'll work, but I got 20,000 in one transaction, which means that the ATM fee is half as much as it is for getting 10,000 pesos. So that's it. Um, with regard to Charles Schwab, I don't have a Charles Schwab account. I've never had a Charles Schwab account. I don't know anything about Charles Schwab account, but I do know that when a company like Charles Schwab says, oh, you don't have to pay an ATM fee. That's this shiny thing over here while they're screwing you on the exchange rate. I don't know that about Charles Schwab, but check it out. When I use my Capital One stuff out of the country of the United States, I get the exchange rate that's that instant. Now, sometimes it's actually a little bit higher because there is a lag in them updating the exchange rate in the system. So maybe the, I look on my phone and the exchange rate at that current moment is 17.4. And I get 17.6 on my credit card because they didn't update it in those. I don't know if it's nanoseconds or minutes or hours, but there's a lag in there. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit less, but it's always like hundredths of a percent less. It's not a big difference. Current exchange rate, Capital One, Quicksilver credit card for most of my purchases in Mexico. Current exchange rate. Now, with regard to exchange rates, if it happens to start going back up, I would suggest that you get a bucket of cash because we still need cash. Uh, I pay my maid, my gardener in cash, and um, if I go to a street vendor, I'm going to pay cash. But anyway, that's uh, Capital One credit card use in Mexico. Um, the debit card is a Capital One 360 account. And again, when I get cash at the ATM with that, I get the exchange rate at that instant. I'm sticking this in here as I'm editing. This system with using a Capital One credit card or any other credit card to pay for your daily purchases, it only works if you can afford to pay off your balance every month before you charged interest. If you charged interest on an ongoing balance in your credit card, forget about the 2% back and all the rest of what I said. You have to pay it off every month or you're getting taken. Next question. I enjoy driving around uh, with you, uh, which brings me to this question. Are some of the areas you drive through safe at night? Yep. We're in Mexico. We're safe. I'll uh, talk about safety in Mexico a little more at another time. Hello, Jerry. Before you went to the United States, you had a couple of people come from the United States and build a property. Can you do a follow-up, please? I am very interested. As a matter of fact, um, his name is Sergio, and I went up there the other day because he called me from where he lives in California and asked me if I had any recommendations for a guy who could uh, start welding on the windows and the doors. And uh, we went up there and took a look at it, and he's made some progress. All of the bricks are plastered. He's coming down in, I believe, July, and I will uh, go up there and make another video of the progress. So thanks for that question, and thanks for the reminder that it's something I want to do. When you say uh, DISH Network, do you actually mean DISH as in the U.S.? TV stations. No, I get Dish uh, Mexico, and I get it through uh, my Telmex bill. So it's part of my telephone bill. Costs about uh, 230 pesos a month, which is like I don't know, 13, 14 dollars with the current exchange rate. 
And I don't get a, a lot of English channels there in Spanish. I get uh, CNN, I get the History Channel, I get A&E, and maybe a couple of movie channels. Um, that's what I get in English. The rest of it is in Spanish. Uh, hundreds of channels in Spanish. And that's just the basic service. I don't pay extra for uh, uh, more service. Uh, when was the last time the lake was up to your seawall? And do you have any pictures of it? Yes, I certainly do. It's been uh, like three years. It's never gone actually to my seawall. It's gone within 20 feet of my seawall. And I'm going to put a link up here to the picture I made when I came home that year. And you can see the water as high as it's been in the last 10 years. Thanks for taking us along today. That's always interesting. I saw a lot of places to trip and fall along the way, broken sidewalks and cobblestones. My question is, how does your area compare as far as senior friendly mobility is concerned? If you fall down and break your face in Mexico, it's your fault. It won't be worth your time to try to sue anybody for liability. Uh, they don't have laws here that require wheelchair access and so on. So uh, senior mobility, as it's referred to here, is, I wouldn't say non-existent, but it's certainly not the law of the land. Um, that's not to say that there aren't uh, people around who are uh, have mobility problems, but it certainly is more difficult than uh, in the United States where it's mandated by law that sidewalks have to have ramps and you have to have uh, um, access to places even if you're disabled. So the answer to your question is, uh, is, you, is, how does it compare? It doesn't compare. I love your videos. Question, could you stay year round if you wanted to? Uh, yes, we are, our immigration status is uh, Emigrada Permanente, which means we're permanent legal residents of Mexico and there are no restrictions with regard to how long we're in the country or out of the country. Um, if you're a temporal resident, it's a little different. And certainly if you're a tourist, you can get a maximum of 180 days to be in the country and then you got to leave. Um, the only reason that there might be a little bit of difference in that answer is that if you're working towards citizenship, then there is a requirement about how much time you've been in the country. I think it's in the total months in the last five years. Lynn and I are not working towards citizenship. We're quite happy being citizens of the United States and legal residents of Mexico. Do they have ambulance service if needed? Yes, there is ambulance service, the Red Cross ambulance service, Cruz Rojo. But I have noticed that the traffic being what it is, getting through the center of Ajijic, sometimes ambulances have a hard time getting through. Um, and I think it's changed in the last few years, but years ago, nobody would ever get out of the way for an ambulance. Um, that's a little different now, but yes, they have ambulance service. Do you buy your car insurance in Chapala? No, I buy it in Riveras de Pilar. Um, Parker Insurance. I've used them for years and they've always taken care of me very well. When I say taken care of me, I mean they've always taken my premiums <laughs> and given me some paperwork to stick in my glove compartment. I've never had a claim. I did have an incident one time where uh, a guy parked right behind me as I was parked on an incline and I couldn't see him in my rearview mirrors. So as I backed up, I backed into him. He was double parked right behind me. And uh, five guys got out of their car and proceeded to tell me that I was going to have to pay him a whole bunch of money. Um, I uh, claimed that it was their fault for par double parking in the back of me. Anyway, we settled it for a few uh, hundred pesos. 
But the reason they settled it for a few hundred pesos instead of what they were asking for, which was a lot of hundreds of pesos, is because I threatened to call my insurance company. Uh, I said, I haven't got insurance. Let's just call the insurance company. We'll call the police. We'll get the insurance. And sure enough, as soon as I start talking about insurance company, which was going to take hours, uh, they didn't have time for that. They just took a few hundred pesos for the big dent in the side of their car. Uh, next question. Hello, Jerry. I love your videos. I noticed you eating in restaurants with Lynn and friends and your videos where you cook at home. I do not recall seeing you eat food from street vendors. Do you typically avoid the street food while in Mexico? Well, the answer is yes and no. Um, in Guadalajara in the summertime when it's hot and there's no refrigeration at those stands, uh, the answer is no. Excuse me. Double negative. The answer is yes, I avoid them. Uh, when it's an evening cooler, maybe not avoid them so much. So when I used to go to the movies a lot, we always stopped at a taco stand after the movies here in Ajijic. I like tacos. My favorite is, uh, you know, uh, chicken tacos or al pastor. Um, tamales, if I'm traveling and I see a tamale, I'll definitely stop and get a tamale. So that's the, no, I don't avoid that. And uh, I love street food. Can you pay your Mexican bills online? Yes, you can pay your property taxes online. I'm not sure about the car tags. You can pay your um, electricity online. You can pay your telephone online. I'm not sure about the water bill. It's like once a year. I don't do it because actually I kind of enjoy going out and doing it. <laughs> and I enjoy making a video for you about it, which is what I did last week. <laughs> oh, I... I think this is the last question I have, and I saved this for the last because I wanted to talk about it a little bit. Uh, it says, uh, this is re with regard to me saying, hey, please subscribe because I want to catch up to another YouTuber. And uh, this, um, it's, it's actually not a state, it's not a question, it's a statement. It says, well, we get old, and surprisingly, the younger audience uh, don't really follow channels detailing Medicare benefits, itemized household budgets, and the old and sedentary, etc. If you want more subscribers, you'll have to post for uh, more Mexico videos too. And what I wanted to say about that was, I've never looked upon YouTube as uh, a contest. I have... Um, supported and encouraged younger YouTubers who travel around Mexico and make great videos. Uh, I enjoy them and I'm a fan of them as well. Uh, but with regard to making more videos, uh, in spite of the fact that I originally, like seven years ago, named my channel JC Travel Stories, I don't travel as much as I used to. So this is pretty much just about, uh, hey, my retired life in Mexico. And um, I have a, a, a bit of wisdom. I'm not going to call it advice. I'm just going to call it wisdom for all of those younger YouTubers and their audiences. I can't get any younger, but if you're lucky, you can get older. Thanks for watching today. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up and please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.